Number 37. Dragsters can actually reach a top speed of 145 meters per second in only 4.45 seconds. Considerably less than that given in the examples. Okay. Letter A. Calculate the average acceleration of such a dragster. All right. So let's take a look at that first. So for part A, um, what are we given? So we have, we have like this dragster, zoom, zoom, and it's traveling, uh, or it's going to reach a top speed uh, at this particular location, a final velocity of 145 meters per second. And it starts from rest, so the initial velocity should be zero meters per second. And it can uh, change its velocity in um, 4.5 seconds, right? So the time here is 4.45 seconds. Okay, and now it says calculate the average acceleration. So this should be fairly straightforward. Uh, just remember the basic acceleration formula is change in velocity. Div oh, change in velocity divided by change in time. Okay, so the acceleration here should be the final velocity, right, of 145 minus the initial velocity of zero, divided by the time change, which was measured to be 4.45. All right, and, my, and the acceleration here should be 145 divided by 4.45. So it works out to be, uh, considering three significant figures, 32.6. So 32.6 meters per second squared. So that would, be the, um, that would be the average acceleration. So now it says, okay, so let's take a look at now part B. So it goes on to say, it says, find the final velocity of this dragster starting from rest and accelerating at a rate found in part A for 402 meters. Okay, so let's now take a look at that. So here's gonna be my part B. Um, I'll just keep using the same picture actually. So now it wants us, so now it's gonna say, all right, keep, this is gonna keep going, right? And um, it says now that it's gonna travel a total distance of 402 meters, right? So that's the distance, but the better term in this problem would be a displacement since we're talking about velocities and stuff. So um, it wants us to now at this location, find the final velocity, okay? If it starts from rest, so the initial is still um, zero. Okay, and um, great, and accelerating at the rate, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and now it says without using any information based on time. So what that means is that I'm probably gonna have to use the acceleration value I just calculated in part A. Well, it actually said that, right? Okay, so I need to now figure out an equation that represents acceleration, displacement, final velocity, and the initial velocity. And if we look on the right-hand side, Equation number four fits the bill. So final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two multiplied by the acceleration multiplied by the displacement. Okay, so the final velocity is what we're looking for. So we'll leave that alone. The initial velocity was zero. So that's just going to be two times the acceleration, which we just found to be 32.6. And then multiplied by the displacement, which was 402 meters. Okay, so the final velocity here squared will be equal to, let's just do some math there. All right, so 32.6 times 402 times two. And we get a value of, and I need three significant figures here. So we get a value of two point, I'm gonna do some scientific notation, 2.62 times 10 raised to the four. Times 10 raised to the four, take the square root. Right. Remember, anytime you take a square root, your answer will always be now plus or minus. Okay, so just take the square root now of two point, square root of 2.62 times 10 to the fourth. And we get a value of 162, okay, 162. So which one should it be? It should be the positive answer because the uh, vehicle is moving, or the dragster in this problem is moving to the right. It's moving in the positive x direction. So. Let's just simply erase this little negative sign. And this will be my, or this is the final velocity. So that's part B. So now part C, it says, oh, why? Why is this final velocity greater than that used to find the average acceleration? And then it gives us some hints. We don't need the hints. So the final velocity that we just calculated um, in, in uh, part B was 162. And I should have put the units, but I didn't. Uh, so this is meters per second. 
all right? But it told us in the first part of the problem, if you look back at the top, that dragsters can actually reach a top speed of 145. So the reality is, reality is dragsters reach 145 meters per second, but this is what we calculated, okay? So why the discrepancy? Well, most likely uh, didn't take into account air resistance. Okay, so the a dragster can only produce so much power, and uh, the faster the dragster moves, the more air resistance that that dragster experiences. So therefore, the more essentially backwards force that the dragster uh, that will that there will be on the dragster. So the reason, one of the reasons why there's this there is this discrepancy is due to air resistance. Okay, great. And then it says, okay, good. So, so that's fine. So that answers that. And then it wants us, and then it says something about, if not, discuss whether the acceleration would be greater at the beginning or the end of the run. Right. So the acceleration should be greater again at the beginning. Okay. So acceleration, let me write that over here. Acceleration greater at beginning. Again, why? Because of air resistance. Okay, more power in the beginning of the drag race, more power can be given to increasing the velocity. And as the velocity keeps getting faster and faster, air resistance keeps increasing. So now more of that power that the dragster is producing will have to be allocated to overcoming air resistance, uh, then being uh, allocated to increasing the velocity. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped, and please subscribe. Thank you.